What's going on, everybody? It's Matt, a.k.a. the Lumberjack Landlord. And yes, there is a reason I look weathered. It's been a long week working. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but I digress. We'll want to make sure that we give the other guys an opportunity to make fun of me for still having a job. So Dion from D Dion Talk Financial Freedom. How's it going, pal? My retired buddy. I already made fun of you today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't you don't kick the dog when he's just lying down. You give him give him a day off. <laughs> yeah. I, I will be back need. tomorrow. Yeah, yesterday a day off. Yeah yesterday, <laughs> the, yeah. yesterday on the jet ski, I was just like, I hope you run out of gas, you jerk. <laughs> I don't know if Mike saw that video yet. I I did a, a video on a jet ski. Oh, <laughs> nice. You did. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, my only comment was, "I hope you run out of gas." <laughs> <laughs> we got our other spiteful. Yeah, we got another good buddy, Mike from One Rental at a Time. How's it going, Zoob? Oh, it's going well. I I uh, I enjoy this tug and pull of uh, getting you retired. I, I oh, like. Oh yeah, it. yeah. It's uh, trust me, we're close. <laughs> <laughs> I always I always tell Ashley. She goes, "So so, how's it going?" I go, "Never been never been closer." never been closer so it's yeah, yeah. where we continue to make progress uh but what i wanted to talk about in today's video thanks for guys for jumping on um i wanted to talk about the coolest way we've ever found a deal i think that a lot of people you know i think struggle with it only being an mls process mm -hmm. and i think while we've still done all done i think a majority of all of our deals are mls a majority of our deals without right? question but there's always those kind of cool things where you kind of find out where you're like, man, that was just kind of how that came together was just really cool. So um, I obviously didn't give you guys any time to prepare, but just want to kind of get your off the cuff remark. Love to hear that few minute story of what was that super cool deal and kind of how you found it. And so Zub, I'll start off with you, my friend. Yeah. So again, just, I think your point up front is, is valid. I think 90, yeah, certainly 85% of all the deals we've done to date, we're out of the MLS. 100% of our deals were out of the MLS for the first decade to just yes. give you context. Yep. Uh, yep. Your network is important. Uh, in fairness, 2021 and 2000, 2020 and 21, I got zero deals out of the MLS because that was crazy times. Yeah. Uh, everything was from the network. So it does, it does change based on how hot, but the coolest deal I ever got so we're, we're working on a, a property during the tent, the, the crash. It happened to be a 10 unit, one bedroom, one bath apartment complex. Uh, it was trashed. Uh, that was a cool story, but it's not the coolest. But so we're working on it. And, and when I say we're working on it, meaning my team is, I'm not there. Okay. Uh, I get a call from my um, repair leader, Greg. And he, he says, hey, some guy in a suit stopped by. I'm like, why? <laughs> well, first off, it's like August. Why is anybody wearing a suit in, in Fresno? It's 110 degrees. Yeah. But he's like, he said he was a bank president and he wanted, he wanted, um, he wanted the owner's number. I didn't trust him. So I got his number to give to you. I'm like, thank you. Right. You don't pass my number around. I appreciate that. So I call this guy back expecting he's a realtor sure, he's sure. something right mm -hmm. never expected it to be an actual bank president sure enough i call the number i get a secretary okay or administrator or whatever the right term is uh, and he goes hey um he goes who are you and i go i'm michael zuber and he goes don't know don't know why you're calling he's really busy i'm sorry he came to my property at x street he goes oh you she goes oh you're the owner of blah 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 i said yes i am we want to talk to you. I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> what is <laughs> what is what is going? How is this gonna go bad? <laughs> is there a debt that somebody didn't yeah. know about? Or yeah. like what is going on, right? Yeah, we're government. So, we're here to yeah, help. Yeah, we're here to help. <laughs> like, oh, this is good. So she goes, uh, he's in a meeting right now, but he said if you were to call, I was to, I was to put you to right through. So so give me a minute. So sure enough, Dang. two or three minutes later, he gets on the phone. Mm -hmm. He goes, hi, I'm, I'm Joe Schmo, you know, from da, 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 da. He goes, here's the long story short. We want to meet you. We like what you're doing at the property. We happen to be the owners of the property next door. Have you seen it? I'm like, of course I have. I drive by it every day or every day I'm there. My team sees it. It's, it's, it's worse than mine is what I basically <laughs> told. He goes, yes, it is. He goes, he basically says, we want to get rid of it. We want to talk to you. We want to get to meet you. We want to understand who you are as an investor. Can, can we, can we meet today? I'm like, well, I think I'm, I think I was in Europe 
Like, because again, that's what I did for my day job. Like, I'm in Europe. I'll be in town this weekend. Can you meet on Sunday? Mm-hmm. Yes. So we agree to meet on Sunday. We meet at my property. We talk about it. We look what we've done. Uh, then he starts to talk about his property. We walk to his property. It's worse than mine. Then he then he goes, hey, it, it looks like you bought this property for X. I said, I did. We bought it for X. He goes, um, X is less than we owe, than, than the balance of that we just took back. And I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm like, not my problem, right? Right, right. He's like, um, would you buy ours at the same price? I'm like, well, as you can see, it's in worse shape. Uh, but basically, if you're willing to give me a 100% loan at the same purchase price, so 100% down, sure, I'll take it over. You know, Give me a loan package. Give me a discount on rate. Let's do it. So uh, he says they, they, he, he can't do that, but he wants to go back and meet with the board and see what they can do. So a week goes by, he calls me up and he goes, we can give you the purchase price. We can even do a hundred percent loan, which I thought there was no chance. Right. I thought it was like, there's no chance. Yeah, no chance. But but he goes, given the condition, we need we need you to put fifty thousand dollars in escrow that we manage and then we release as repairs are done. I'm like, what about the rate? He goes, Well, the prevailing rate is X. Well, I said, if I'm gonna put tie up fifty thousand dollars in your institution, I want a slightly better rate. So they ended up giving me a better rate of a, a point. So we negotiated Whoa. everything. Got a better rate. Got the full. We got the same purchase prices next door. Next door, and all I had to do was escrow fifty grand. The repairs for that property were closer to a hundred. Yeah, I bet. Um, but you know, so again, zero down deal, direct from a bank, from a guy walking up on the property next door. It was it was a crazy story. Yeah, the, a bank. I bought a property from a bank president. It was wild. That's awesome, Dion. Your turn. <laughs> I was kind of hoping to go first because <laughs> Mike is Mike's story is a better closer, right? My story, I'm hoping this isn't a case where boring is sexy because that's my only shot here. I do have some teachable points, but <clears throat> all of my deals, 100%, are from the MLS. Mm-hmm. I've uh, I've got two versions of the coolest deal. The first one is. So from the MLS, and I work so well with multiple agents that they know that when I find a deal that meets my metrics, I'll close. So not only do I get the auto searches every day, but occasionally I'll have an agent call me and say, hey, of the 13 emails you got from my auto search this morning, did you see this one? So they're pointing out the one that meets my metrics the best because they know I'll close with them if they sent me the deal. The second thing is about half my portfolio, at least three of the deals out of seven, I was in second position. Yes. I make an offer. They come back. They go, we've got a better offer. Can you beat it? I'm like, that's my best offer. But if theirs falls through, mine still stands. Half the half of my deals, they came back and they said, we'll take your offer. There was no negotiation of it fell through. Can you come back higher? It was it fell through. Are you still there? Right. One of those, they were in the middle of a 1031 and let me know, which gave me negotiation strength to knock another 10 grand off the price and close. Yeah, the the but, one question I wanted to ask you real quick, Dion, because this is so awesome. Of the seven deals that you've done, how many did you pay list price for? One. Yeah. The house I'll, hack duplex, I paid list price. I've offered list price on two or three others, but they I offered over on my fourplex and negotiated under list price. Yeah. Uh, inspection and a couple of other things. Uh, list price is a number that matters to the seller. Not you. Yeah. Right. Not to the, to us. What numbers work for us? Yeah. I would tell you over 90. I can't recall. I know it's happened, but I can't recall a deal that I paid list price for. It's just it, the last two years, if you got in the market, you thought you had to overpay, throw that memory and experience away. The market is slowing down. Use it to your advantage. I closed on a duplex in 2021, listed at 400, offered 400, negotiated only 2,500 off. So it was almost list price. But two solid investor friends of mine that invest in the area, there were two duplexes side by side, same price. I told them, hey, I've only got the funds and availability to get the one right now. Why don't you pick up this other one? Both of them said, I wouldn't buy that deal. Wow. 
And now looking back, it's, it's an amazing return. Both of them are kicking themselves. So the actual coolest way I think I've got a deal, and it's actually what's going to spur the video we're making for my channel today, is I owned a single family and I tried to turn it into a rental. I moved into an apartment and I rented it out. I didn't educate myself. I watched no podcasts, read no audiobooks, or listened to no audiobooks. Um, I just thought I'll just be able to replace my income with no education whatsoever. And I made every mistake you can. Rented to a friend with a handshake because who can trust a who can trust a stranger and and who needs a lease? Um, let the rent being late slide until it became never. I tried to give that house away. Here's where I think it's the coolest way I got a deal. I couldn't. I owed more than it was worth. So the biggest fear a lot of people have is what if a crash happens after I buy? A crash happened while I owned that property and I couldn't give it away. That was lucky. Mm. You go forward enough years after any crash, everyone would like to own a property purchased at the peak just before the crash. Everyone right now, would you like to buy at 2007, 2008 prices on any property anywhere, right? So since I couldn't give it away, I educated myself and I turned it into an actual cash producing asset and uh, can't reproduce that one, but sometimes boring is sexy. No, I, I think there's so much in your story that people just need to take. Do the work, write the deal, network. Again, you can become financially free on only a couple of units mm -hmm. out of the MLS. I think your story is awesome. I concur. And Mike, to your point, you know, as far as MLS deals, I think for the first 15 years, I didn't do a deal that wasn't an MLS. A little early, Dion. Yeah. But, <laughs> that beer looked cold. As soon as I can breathe. You can't drink all day if you don't start early. <laughs> awesome. But yeah, I think that it was 15 years before I started getting deals out of MLS or before I had enough of a reputation where I could actually get on the off market. Hey, I just came across something, any interest. And that was my fault. I didn't spill, spend a bunch of time in the beginning of my investment career, really pushing the envelope and getting more people to hear tell my story. Tell everybody. Tell you got to tell everybody. Every, I mean, that was the biggest mistake in my first five years is I, 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 I don't know why I thought this, but I thought if I acted invisible, I could get more done. This is not, don't be invisible. Tell everyone. Be. Everybody. I literally told my waitress last Sunday at the diner. I don't know if she's a moonlighting real estate agent. I don't know. Don't I don't know, know who if, they know. I don't know who she knows. So I told her, she's like, yeah, that's really cool. Okay. Awesome. If you ever hear it of anybody. And so my coolest one is one that I'm working on right now. That's why I wanted to do this subject was because it even getting in, walking down the stairs away from this person's office, I was laughing. The way it all happened was I put a deal under contract. I was dropping the check off at the attorney's office, knock on the attorney's door, see that he's there. I go in, give him the check. I introduced myself and he's like, oh, cool. He goes, all right, sounds good. And I said, hey, before I let you go, just wanted to tell you who I am, what I do, and kind of how I invest. I said, do you have a few minutes? He's like, sure, sure. We talked through it. He goes, that's interesting. I said, really? I said, how so? He said, I actually help people through restructuring, like chapter 13s and things. He goes, I actually have a family that owns their house. They have a ton of equity, but they're on social security. He goes, would you do a lease back? Would you buy their house, do a lease back to them, and they'll consider doing a large portion of owner financing? Yes, I would consider that. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm here. Let me go get my cape in the car. I, yeah, exactly. were super I have another check. <laughs> exactly. So it was really cool just because, again, it was increasing the network, telling people. So the deal's not done, obviously. Um, because it literally just happened this week when I was dropping up a deposit check for another deal. But the really cool thing about it is, is that my investment career has continued to grow, continued to get better. Um, and everybody, more people knowing the story more, it's just absolutely huge. I was able to tap his phone with my amazing digital business card. He's got my content. He goes, he's like, would you be able to do like two or three more of that type of deal? <laughs> and I was like, yes, I would. Yes. I would. <laughs> so it might appear that just by dropping off 
don't th- always be thinking big yes. just by dropping off a check for a deposit to an attorney. I might've opened a whole new line of business for myself for this attorney while he's restructuring people yeah. to buy their homes, bail them out. Give, they can stay as long as they'd like with their social security. They can stay as long as they want. Absolutely. And that might be three years, five years, seven years, 10 years. And on top of that, instead of a bad reverse mortgage, oh. they just hold some of the debt and I pay them an in interest. Like which how much helps, better, which helps them, which helps them a ton. How much better of a deal. I'm pretty sure on a reverse mortgage that you run out of equity. If you own it, you run out of equity typically in like seven years or something uh, or nine I years. Don't know. They're horrible. Though. It's horrible. So this is just an awesome opportunity where I get to help people. They get to stay in their house. We get a good investment. We have a big, they've lived there for 15 years. They're baked in. Oh yeah. They're they don't, big. They they're don't want to leave. They no. don't want to leave. I've got a tenant for as long as they want to stay. And that's so awesome. They don't have to mow their lawn anymore. Likely. So I can take care of that for them. So I appreciate you guys doing this. I think this was, I think people really need to be encouraged that every deal doesn't have to come from the MLS, but you can still win. A majority of all of our deals come from MLS, but be doing the right thing, networking. Make sure that you have the ability to tell your story. It's called an elevator pitch. Mike and I know what this is because we used to teach reps this. It's called an elevator pitch. You have to be able to articulate in 15 seconds who you are, what you do, and why they should do business with you. That's what you have to do in 15 seconds. Write it up, practice it. Because you, if you ever get on an elevator, I never took elevators that had as, we don't have that tall of buildings in New Hampshire. So you don't have 15 seconds. You have to kind of get it out in nine. That's why I have to talk like this. But practice that, make sure you have it down because anybody you come into contact with, they'll give you 15 seconds. And if you have a clear and tight story and then your digital business card that you can tap their phone with, they'll remember your name. So that's the way that you should be absolutely trying to grow your network, especially in times like these, because People are literally saying, I just don't know what I'm going to do. You can be, I mean, I'm pretty sure they're not going to negotiate anything in this situation very hard because I'm helping them Yeah, and I'm happy to help. So anyway, Mike, where can everybody find you, my friend? One rental at a time. And we do our Saturday live streams at 8 a.m. for 60 minutes. Jam packed. If you want your question answered, make sure you do a super chat. Get on early. (laughs) Yeah. Get on early and do a super chat. Dion, how can everybody find you, sir? That elevator pitch you're talking about, every veteran's been trained on it, whether you're going through GPS, TPS, SFL oh, tap. Cool. Um, How does that go? Tweak it. That's does- Army, Marines, Navy. Tweak what your, your elevator pitch. They tell you when you get out, here's how you pitch yourself during an interview or when you Got meet it. somebody at a company. Tweak it to how you invest. Make it Absolutely. be the way that you let everyone know how you're looking at life now through an investor's eyes. Absolutely. You, you can find me right here on YouTube making Boring Sexy, Dion Talk Financial Freedom. <laughs> You're not on the jet ski anymore, and I still hope you run out of gas. Anyway, we always <laughs> try and create fantastic content for you guys. Make sure you hit that like button and also subscribe, and we'll hit you with a second video just after this. Thanks, everybody. Ciao.